Welcome to the Drunk Dietitians Podcast, co-hosted by your favorite tipsy registered dietitians, yours truly, Sammy Previtt, co-owner of Dietitians of Palm Valley, and Jenna Warner, owner of Happy Strong Healthy. Us dietitian besties can't stand diet culture bullshit and love keeping it real. Our mission is for all humans to believe that they are made for so much more than chasing a smaller body. We are also here to share with you that food can be fun and pleasurable again. Although we're medical professionals, we are human too. We are not afraid to share our deepest secrets and how years of our lives were taken by diet culture. We started this podcast so no human has to feel alone in their journey towards food freedom. So grab your favorite cocktail and join us for our favorite casual happy hour and expect to laugh, cry, learn, and grow. Cheers. Hello, everybody. This is just Jenna today, and you are tuning in to Drunk Dietitians. I am doing the solo episode because I felt it was very necessary to address some of the concern and confusion, I think is a really great word for it, that is going on in the nutrition space right now. So over last week, not the weekend, um, I posted a little question box to ask some people for any input on any questions that they may have on the current issues with a specific diet that is having some turmoil at the moment. I'm going to try and be super politically correct because this is by no means bashing. It's just a perspective. It's bringing attention and awareness to different concerns um, and setting some of the record straight for our listeners when it comes to this topic. And I'm not going to dive deep into some of the history or the drama with the previous pieces of this topic, but there's, you guys sent me hundreds of responses. It was like my most engaged question box ever. I'm so honored. Um, But I think that the reason for that is, is that so many people have been impacted by this diet. Um, And I want to start this episode by disclosing that I was one of them and I'm not ashamed of it. And, you know, I think that we've talked about this often, Sam and I, um, but experience is your greatest teacher. And so I am not a stranger to diet culture. I opened up episode one by explaining to you guys that my history with diet culture is extensive. And I consider the F factor diet, there we go, I said it, I feel like I just cursed. Um, I consider the F factor diet to have been my gateway. Um, I'm not blaming the diet at all. And if I actually went back into my DMs and I used to DM the owner and creator of this diet often because I sincerely looked up to her. And before her recent launch of powders and products, you know, the diet itself, in my opinion, she is a dietitian who is incredibly well educated, who made fiber sexy. You know, nobody talks about fiber. They didn't really before, you know, her diet kind of became pretty mainstream. Um, It just, Metamucil is probably what you think of when you think of fiber. And then this diet came along and kind of glorified it. But then it went too far, like most diets do. So I do want to open this up by disclosing that, you know, I have personally tried the diet, never to the extent of what it actually is. Um, But I've tried the products, I've tried the crackers, I've done all the things, and I've been impacted by it as well. I'm not going to say that this diet was the reason that I lost my period or anything like that, but I can see why it would be if you were following it very closely, which is what some people are coming out and stating. Um, But I also want to bring attention to the fact that as a generalized statement. I believe it's Harvard that put out a statement or just a, I think it's health.harvard.edu says on average Americans eat about 10 to 15 grams of fiber total per day when the actual recommendation is for women, it's up to age 50, about 25 grams of fiber per day. And for men, about 38 grams of fiber per day. It says women and men older than 50 should have 21 and 30 grams respectively. So I think as an average in totality, our country may need help 
adding some extra fiber into their diets. However, this diet itself promotes incredibly high levels of fiber, incredibly low air quotes net carbohydrates, and insanely low caloric guidelines and total fat grams as well. Almost to like keto levels of um, carbohydrate net carbs with even lower amounts of fat. And so it's just like this big mess, I guess you can say. And for the record, it's kind of awkward just like staring at myself on a Zoom camera. Um, but I'm pretending I'm talking to all of you guys and I hope that, you know, I get this point across concisely and quickly. So with all of that said, um, many of you commented in the comment box too and asked me personally, but you still eat Gigi crackers. And I want to set the record straight that I absolutely do. Um, especially being pregnant, <laughs> when you're pregnant, the constipation um, aspect can be super high. Um, and Gigi crackers for me personally have really helped TMI for everybody. Helps that not be an issue for me personally. However, there was a time in my life that I ate GG crackers because I had to in my mind. I ate GG crackers because bread was the devil. I ate GG crackers because they were the only substitution for carbohydrates, not because I enjoyed them, liked them, or wanted them. And so I want to open this conversation up with talking about the intentions behind your choices, which is something that Sammy, Sam, however you guys like to refer to her, she's always going to be Sammy to me. Um, but Sammy, to me, has explained this concept when I really started my intuitive eating journey many different ways when, you know, I would find myself maybe still measuring food or um, choosing to have something like Gigi crackers. And she would simply ask me, Jenna, what is the intention behind your choice? And I think that that's a question many of us need to ask ourselves specifically when it comes to a product like this. So today, now, I honestly, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Gigi crackers are my favorite food, but I don't hate them. And if you watch my stories and if you watch, you know, the foods and combinations that I do put together, I'm slapping cream cheese and jelly or avocado and jelly. I know gross to some people, but I love it. Peanut butter and jelly, like melted cheese, all sorts of fun combinations on top of these crackers because I actually enjoy it. Um, you may not. And that's a completely different story, right? But because I actually do enjoy it and it's something that, you know, makes me feel good before, during, after, which is super important to me, it is a reason for me to say that it's okay for me personally to have them. However, I don't always want them. Like, for example, this morning, I was thinking about what I wanted for breakfast for what felt like an hour. I was having one of those moments where I was like, do I want this? Do I want that? Which is amazing when you have the ability to have that conversation with yourself, right? Because you recognize that you have choices. Um, and I was going to make peanut butter and jelly on top of Gigi crackers because I needed something quick before I walked the dog. Um, it was going to be a snack. And then I realized, like, I really don't want them. I don't want to chew that much. I don't want the crunch. I want an English muffin. And that to me six, seven years ago when I was really following that diet was um, never, that would have never happened. So I think it's really important to first and foremost think about your intentions behind your choices and your intentions behind the choices that you make to fuel and nourish your body and what will lead to the greatest satisfaction for you as well. So if that's the first time you're hearing this concept, I think that you could probably stop this episode right here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's a really important concept to think about and really ask yourself, am I being honest with my intentions for the things that I'm choosing to fuel my body with, to feed my body with, to nourish my body with? Are the choices that I'm making leading to greater satisfaction? Do I finish my meal thinking, wow, that was really good. I feel great right now. or do I finish my meal thinking, wow, that sucked? <laughs> and, you know, these are really honest questions. In addition to some of the drama with this diet at this moment is that many people are finishing their meals or snacks or whatever it is and feeling very uncomfortable. And physical discomfort is something that we talk about, Sam and I respectively, in our practices on our platforms often, because food shouldn't make you feel physically uncomfortable. And so, you know, I, again, 
complete disclosure, have purchased the powders that have, you know, had some drama attached to them. Now I'm not going to address whether there's lead in them or E. coli or whatever those issues are, because I, I'm not capable of speaking to that. And for example, the, you know, certificate of analysis for the products has not been released. And again, that's not my space and that's not where this conversation will go, but that is part of the questioning on the product itself. But I purchased the powder. It's the 20 grams of protein, 20 grams of fiber per serving, which for the record, if you remember what I just stated, you know, women only need about 25 grams per day for optimal digestion and heart health. Okay. That's what fiber does. It makes us feel good because it keeps us fuller, maybe more satisfied, but it's also very beneficial for your heart health in addition to your digestive health when it's not being abused. Okay. Um, but so 20 grams of protein in a powder, you know, I was having this because, you know, I have a sweet tooth. I don't think that that's anything, or I shouldn't say that I love sweets and this powder is very sweet. Like it's sweetened with some sort of, um, artificial sweetener. And that never bothers me because I love sweets, but you know, I was using it and I would have this really very bizarre heartburn afterwards, but not ever correlate to the two. Then I would try a different powder um, and not have the same reaction. So for me personally, that product didn't physically make me feel good. I'm in a space where my relationship with food is healing because I don't think we're ever healed, right? Um, and I was able to correlate those two things and notice that like this isn't physically making me feel good and stop that. However, there's many people that have been impacted by this process, the glittery diet culture message of what the brand is preaching that has led them to feel like it's 20 grams of fiber per meal or bust, right? And that if they can't handle that or if they can't have um, the can't tolerate the product, then there, there must be something wrong with them. Which again, diet culture and Christy Harrison's words, the life thief makes us consistently feel like we're doing something wrong. And so that is something to just, again, be aware of, be cognizant of, be cognizant of the way that you're feeling when you're using foods and how you're feeling afterwards, in addition to why you're using them. So Whew, that's a lot. When you're doing this solo, there's no water breaks. Um, one of the other things that I want to talk about is that the program itself is stated um, that it's not a diet. And I want you guys as informed listeners to really think about the difference between a lifestyle, which means long term and easily transferred for the rest of your life versus a diet. And so in this program, if you're not familiar with it, there's two steps. There's a step one, which is like your beginning program. And then there's your step two, which is your maintenance. And if you follow, which my friend Alex Taroff said this very, very well, is that the diet itself has had created a lot of very devoted followers that became pretty much brand ambassadors for the program. Um, and when they were having success, again, that's air quoted, in the program, they started blogging about it and starting Instagram accounts that went viral because they were highly promoted by the brand with their creations with all of these very, very, very high fiber combinations. And they would share their air quotes, successes in their eyes because they were being successful as to what the supposed lifestyle said that they could be. And these non-nutrition professionals were sh now sharing this nutrition advice for hundreds and thousands of people and people thinking that to be part of this club, this cult, this this place, you know, I had to eat like these people. And so if you really followed some of these big names, like, I mean, these accounts had thousands of people on them. Um, you would consistently see after a weekend away, after a weekend with friends, after a night out, after a couple different scenarios, you would consistently see these people posting, at least I would consistently see these posting, people posting, I'm going back to a strict step one on Monday. Or, you know, fun weekend, strict step one starts X, Y, Z date. And so, when you think about the difference between a lifestyle and a diet, you know, a diet will have you start over on Monday. 
a diet has you thinking that you have to restrict to fix your air quotes fun, right? A lifestyle doesn't do this and doesn't twist your relationship with family gatherings and vacations and feelings and funds along the way. And so for to set the record straight, the strict step one, I actually screenshotted what somebody wrote um, as like they actually shared on their story, you know, that they were a client of the practice and what the step one looked like. And it is very little fat. It is probably very, I don't, I don't want to give out numbers because I don't know. It's very little net carb. It's very high fiber and it is about 900 to a thousand calories. Now the portions that are recommended on here seem to be very broad stream for everybody. No matter who you are, this is step one. No matter what your current, you know, needs are, this is step one. It's X, Y, Z calories. It's three ounces of protein. It's very little carb, very little fat. So when you think about, oh, but it's also three liters of water, which is fantastic. Again, the principles of adding in more fiber and water, great. But the reason that three liters is like a very hard recommendation is because if you drink anything less than that on this diet, you'll be heavily impacted. Um, and that's a step beyond constipation. So there's this constant feeling of having to go backwards to step one to reset, fix, you know, get yourself straight and really just heavily restrict yourself and almost punish yourself, not almost, and punish yourself for having extra drinks, having, you know, dessert, having real food or whatever you did that you felt so guilty about, you could always go back to step one. That's a red flag, okay? Like the biggest flag you can see, like the one I see waving in the ocean right now because it's very choppy out there. Um, big, huge red flag. And in addition, you know, if alcohol is your thing, Sam and I are definitely going to discuss, you know, relationships with alcohol as well and on a later podcast by, um, by request. But this diet also allows wine with every night of the week, which is fine, great, but it doesn't allow, and I'm going to read you a list of foods that they say to avoid. Actually, I'm not because it could be very triggering and I don't want to do that. Um, but there is a huge list of foods to enjoy, including a ton of different starches, fruits, vegetables, cheese, meats, um, and dairy products. And so it's a very confusing message as to what is really the purpose of it and is the purpose to improve your health are we using health promoting behaviors or is the sole purpose of this diet which is being taught taught or flaunted as a lifestyle to lose weight and if it's only to lose weight does it have your best interest in mind and i think that that's something again that we need to think about so, so far, we've discussed that there's a step one and step two, which means immediately that it's not a lifestyle change, that there is the same recommendations for nutrients for everyone, which if you guys have followed along this podcast at all, in addition to following our social medias or the guests that we've brought on here, every single human being out there has different dietary needs, different dietary preferences, and it's, it's irresponsible from a practitioner standpoint to recommend the same thing for all people. Um, and perhaps if you are an actual client of the practice, that would not be the case, but I don't know because there's a book that recommends the same for all people. Um, the increase in fiber is fantastic if you're not meeting your fiber needs, but to feel like you need to start adding powder, unflavored powder to eggs, which is something somebody asked, um, how do you add fiber to your eggs? I mean, Guys, eggs are protein, they have lots of nutrients in them, they're delicious, but they don't need to have powder added to them to increase the volume or the fiber content. It's not a high fiber food, that's just it. And so when it gets to that point where every bite of food that you eat, cookies, pancakes, bites, like energy bites, I mean, not like 
normal bites of food. Um, PB2, which is a very you know prevalent product on the brand's docket, is being mixed with fiber powder, and pasta sauce is being mixed with fiber powder, and guacamole is being mixed with fiber powder. You know, we get to a point where we're like, do we even know what fiber is doing for us? And to be honest with you, there is no, the Institute of Medicine has not set an upper tolerable limit for fiber because at the end of the day, it is indigestible, but it doesn't mean that there aren't consequences if you eat too much of it. And we're just personally right now talking about the physical. And so in order to prevent constipation, you need to make sure that you're drinking enough water. That's number one. Um, but the mental aspect of this program can be very detrimental. And I'm not going to sit here and say that it causes eating disorders, but I will sit here and say that it causes disordered patterns and thoughts about foods. Food products that are carbohydrate heavy, that do not have fiber in them, become very looked down upon unless you're engaging in what is known as their three bite rule, which is, you know, to have three bites of whatever. Um, <laughs> and so it can really heavily impact the relationship with food, specifically carbohydrates. Um, as a practitioner, I've worked with hundreds of clients after they've come off this diet. And some of our first recommendations have been to make lists of foods that were off limits and why, and to discuss those together, and then to figure out which of those foods we can start bringing in in a very safe way. I had one client once a very long time ago who our first recommendation was to add like a tablespoon of oatmeal to the meal because it was a very high fear food for her after engaging in this diet. So any diet that, or program, or anything that makes you feel that much intense fear and stress around a food such as oatmeal, which is like the best food ever flavor wise, but also so good for your heart and your body and nourishment and everything else that, you know, I've said this so many times in so many different ways, but there are plenty of things to fear and be stressed about in this world. But if we're doing our jobs right, food shouldn't be one of them. Instead, as a practitioner and the, the creator of the program is highly educated, you know, I will not take that away from her um, ever. Um, but she doesn't maybe see the connection to the fear that she's instilling in people around these food products that do not cause harm. I said it. Woo, carbs don't cause harm, people. So just something to think about there. Now the the next part, so that's part of the demonizing food aspect of this program. But the next part that I have a huge problem with is the recommendation where, you know, I watched a live on the program this morning that <clears throat> She stated, you know, I, I don't say don't exercise, I say exercise smarter. I think that's great, but to put out a blanket statement, and this used to be, this is how deeply invested I was in this program that my husband and I to this date still joke because their program's tagline used to be fiber is my cardio. Like that's such fucking bullshit, okay? Um, it's bullshit, fiber's not your cardio, okay? Cardio is your walks, that's your movements, it's your taking your dog out, it's walking the beach, it's running if that's what you like to do, but it's not eating your fiber, and like that is such a damaging message. Um, and strength training is so important. I go back to our conversations with Danielle Pacenti on this podcast and Little List Fitness. Um, if you haven't listened to those episodes, it's so powerful. And Tally Rye, you know, strength training is important for your bones. It's important for your strength as we age through our lifetime and our lifespan. But to sit here and say that every single person needs to do XYZ fitness and shouldn't do the other XYZ fitness, even if it's something that they love to do, is very confusing. And if you follow this diet and you do still partake in exercise because you love it, it could be very dangerous. And so again, something else to think about and to consider. Um, so I have in my list that the issues I have with it were the steps. It's the same for everyone. The very, very high fiber recommendation, the little fitness recommendation in regard, the very little fat, um, in addition to the aspect of demonizing food as a whole. Um, 
we discussed why fiber is needed for your heart and your digestive system overall, super important. It also does keep you perhaps maybe, it keeps me, I can only talk for myself, keeps me more satisfied. I do enjoy adding high fiber fruits and vegetables to my foods. Um, and I do like some like higher brand cereals mixed with my granola um, in my yogurt bowls as well. That's me. What you need, we discussed. And we talked about intentions behind the choice. I think a lot of the issue is messaging in this program. Things like you should do X, Y, Z to offset your hunger. Come on. Like that's what we talk about all the time is really being intentional with our introspective awareness about hunger and fullness. And instead we have a program that's teaching us to offset it, right? Um, or disregard, disregard it. Um, I'm just reading some of the things that people have put in here. You know, you can only have one snack per day, no matter who you are. And these rules that are just spread across the, the spectrum for everybody are just very unfair. I am looking over some of the other comments that people have responded to me and said, you know, for example, this person wrote in and said, I replace all of my carbs with fiber. How could that be healthy? And I think what's amazing is when you start to unpack and get curious about your habits and start to really look at this and say, wow, I was under the glittery spell too. Like guys, I'm Jenna. I am a dietitian. I have been a dietitian for 15 years and I opened up this episode telling you that I follow this program because it's dripping in glitter and gold right and like it's dripping in this lifestyle that's very much unattainable because of many reasons but it's being packaged in a book and products that say if you add fiber and protein at every meal you know you can have this too and I need you to really think about what that means and I need you to think about what's being sold to you and how the program itself and let's talk about every program at this point the programs that are being widespread sold where every single person needs the exact same thing can't possibly be something that could actually be a lifestyle for your lifespan for your entire life um the restrict binge cycle is so real and the restriction on these foods but the reliance on going back to a very restrictive step in order to quote unquote fix it is what it's built on and it's built on, again, what Christy Harrison says, the life thief making you feel like it's your fault, that you just were not strong enough. And that, again, is fucking bullshit. And I need you to hear that. And I'm sorry for cursing, even though when I'm by myself, but whatever. Um, I think that I have a lot of people who have wrote in and said, I had so much bloating with 90 plus grams of fiber. What is the difference between the types? And so again, fiber is naturally found in foods. Fiber is found in fruits and vegetables and whole grains like oatmeal. And it is also found in processed items like powders um, and I was going to say potions, but that's just not right. Uh, but it is, it can be created as well. Fiber is the indigestible part of the carbohydrate. It's the bran. It's the outside of the seed that protects the seed itself. Um, the Gigi crackers are the bran cereal that I recommend or that I had discussed with a couple minutes ago, those are just all bran. They have taken away the other two pieces of the seed. So that if we're looking at a whole grain seed itself, there's three parts. The bran is the outside. It's that protective fibrous layer. The middle part or the white part of the seed itself is the endosperm, which is the starch. And the middle of the seed is the germ that has, they call it the nutrient powerhouse that has the vitamins, the protein, a little bit of healthy fat. And so essentially these brand substitutes that are natural, quote unquote, because who knows what that means, right? But whatever. Um, they're just the brand part of the product. So they are still providing you with some carbohydrates, but it's, it is less. Um, so again, if you are somebody that's eating these products, you will never see me eating those as my source of carbohydrate alone. Um, me personally, always with pieces of fruit or granola or other sources for me. Um, and you have to figure out what works for you, but it is a good way to add in some sources of fiber into your diet if you feel like you're not getting enough. But I promise you, you can get enough 
from whole grains, fruits, vegetables, beans. Like, oh my goodness, how did I forget to talk about legumes and beans? So much fiber in there, such, such, such great sources. And there's such a wide variety of flavors attached to it as well. Um, moving through more of these comments, um, somebody wrote, what's the scoop? Not gonna answer that. <laughs> um, I think we asked this a lot. And then somebody else wrote, which was very um, important for me to address, a dietitian that I used to work with way back in the day at ShopRite, said, I'll never forget you bringing all of those products to a convention in California. And again, you know, I want to be the first to tell you that I was heavily impacted and it took time for me to recognize that. And so if you're listening to this right now and you're like, I need to reevaluate my relationship with these products and the foods that I'm putting into my body, um, this could be a good place to start. So huh, that was a lot. I hope that we got the point across that no, not everybody needs the same amount of food. You do not need hundred grams of fiber per day. You need more than 900 calories per day. Um, let's see, uh, somebody else wrote on here, have you heard the episode of Diet Starts Tomorrow with her conversation? And I have, and it is definitely a powerful episode, but what I would recommend for the listeners on here right now is the Diet Starts Tomorrow podcast had an episode with Lisa, H -A, the wellness ethics, um, where she discusses why that program itself is in fact a diet as well. Very similar to what I went over today. Um, and it is incredibly powerful to hear the way that it's discussed on there too. And so I want to close this out by bringing you back to the intuitive eating principles and the understanding that you can choose to still include higher fiber items into your diet if they make you feel good. And I think that's the number one thing to remember is that food should make you feel good before, during, and after eating it. Food should make you feel satisfied. It shouldn't make you feel like you're missing something. Food should make you feel energized and happy and like you know you're just nourishing this beautiful vessel every single time you're eating instead of taking something away and in fact i heard the the owner of the program saying that the diet itself is about adding things into the diet and i think that again you guys being the consumers just really think about the sources and think about the statements and what else is being promoted on the brand page with those statements when there is a list of foods that you can't have is it really about what we can add into the diet or is it about what we can't have <laughs> in the diet, in the program in order to be successful. Um, today, so today is Monday the 17th as I'm recording this right now, um, I posted a Instagram post about what does healing your relationship with food really look like? And to summarize that, to summarize healing your relationship with food and food freedom and the comparison and contrast to the program that was just discussed today and the disordered outcomes that have been shared by hundreds and thousands of people on social media at this point. You know, food freedom in my eyes is saying yes to the foods you want without conditions. And conditions meaning that we're not bartering with ourselves anymore. It means that we're not telling ourselves, if I have this, then I have to work out more. Or if I go out to eat tonight, I won't have lunch today. Or I can only have one snack because I'm on step one. That's not food freedom, right? It's also the saying no to food that we don't want when we truly don't want it. It's making a choice when we're at a party and when we're out to dinner of the appetizer that we want or don't want or the dinner that we want to order. Like people ask me this all the time. How can, can I order a salad and still intuitively eat? A hundred percent. Do you like salads? Do you like a salad that has, you know, all these delicious things in it? And when you go to a restaurant, you look forward to that salad because it has also has protein and it, it has some carbs or it doesn't, but you love the bread basket or whatever it is. Right. But like you actually really love it. And that's why you're ordering it and you feel good and satisfied and not hungry afterwards but also pleasantly comfortable then of course 
And it might be saying no to something else because you really want that item. And that's part of food freedom. And then another example would be making choices that based on how you feel and how you want to feel, again, with no conditions, but as a free human being, instead of as a human being that's following rules of someone else's plan that's made for the masses. In close, food freedom, in my definition, is the ability to have unconditional permission to eat all foods, but to choose the ones that we want when we want them. This means some days we may choose to have all high nourishment foods and other days could be a real mixture. No combination is ever a bad one, but we are going to help you connect to your choices so that you can continue to choose the foods that make you feel your best physically and mentally. Foods that do not make you feel your best become a learning experience. You get curious about them. Never a punishment and a reason to go back to a previous step of a program. Foods that don't make us feel our best, we learn from, and those that do make us feel our best and are most satisfied, maybe we learn to repeat more often. And I wanna leave you with that and leave you with the piece about mental health as well, because a program that doesn't allow you to travel to, a program that doesn't allow you to travel to go away for a weekend, to go out to dinner, to enjoy time with friends, and this is not just this diet right now, this is all of them. If you ever are following a program that actually physically and mentally brings you out of the situation where all you can think about is what you have to do next to fix what you're doing at that moment, or you have to really scan the menu beforehand so you know what you can eat because you're so stressed about going there, or there's nothing for you to eat so you can't go with your friends, or you hit your macros for the day so you can't go out for happy hour, or whatever the case is, if there's this stress surrounding these choices about living your life, then it's time to reevaluate. It's time to really think about the happiness factor and to make yourself aware that restriction in any physical and mental way is never the answer. <sighs> that was a lot. I hope that helped. I hope you know that you have unconditional permission to eat the foods that you love. I hope you know that the reason intuitive eating is not called a diet is because it truly isn't one. <laughs> um, in the words of Evelyn Triboli, intuitive eating is a journey of discovery and it's a self-care eating framework that's goal is to increase life satisfaction. And if that's something that sounds good to you, stay with us follow along. We will point you in the right direction and help you continue to nourish your mind, body, and soul because that is what we, speaking for myself and for Sammy, want more than anything in this world is to help you leave that diet culture life behind and to start enjoying all foods based on how you feel and want to feel next. So thank you for listening. I hope this clears some of that up. Um, eat the foods that you love. Eat with the intention. Remember your intentions behind your choices. And if you have any questions, make sure you know how to reach us. Mwah! Guys, thank you so much for listening and being here with us. I am virtually cheersing all of you. We absolutely love sipping on a cocktail with you and sharing as many nutrition tipsies as possible during this episode. We know there are a ton of pods out there, and we are so appreciative of your time that you spent listening to us today. Please be sure to check out the show notes for episode details and all of our guest information. We promise to keep bringing you the best and the most knowledgeable and fun guests we possibly can. Please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and post if you enjoyed our content today. And visit us on Instagram and Facebook at Drunk Dietitians to find out what is up next for us on the pod. We absolutely love you. We appreciate you and can't wait to spend more time cheersing with you soon.